Hi, and welcome to Highbrow Lowbrow. I'm your host, Sean. With me here is Ron Sensei. Each week, we get together to discuss a well-regarded, highly-received film against a cheesy blockbuster. Basically, an artsy-fartsy film versus a mindless good time. So each week, we, one of us chooses which category we like to watch. And this week, it was your choice, Ron. So what'd you pick? Superhuman. <laughs> All right. Um, for the highbrow choice, I ended up choosing Fast Color. Ron, cheers. Cheers. Fast Color is a 2019 film by Julia Hart. Hunted by mysterious forces, a young woman who has supernatural abilities must go on the run when her powers are discovered. With nowhere else to go, she flees back to her family and the farmhouse she abandoned long ago. There, while being pursued by the local sheriff, she begins to mend the broken relationships with her mother and daughter and learns what, that the power she needed was inside her all along. So, Ron, what did you think of this highbrow choice? The beginning was very interesting and good because the setups were, it, it didn't waste time. It, it just, you know, you're in the middle of her escape, she's escaping, um, you know, even though the ropes were kind of goofy, but it, it gave you the context of what was happening, the gun, and she goes in. Um, but before that, though, the, the, the world, the, the setup of the world, where there's no there's no rain and so therefore water's precious and then immediately diving into the story uh, from there however things just got things just got boring it had a lot of history family history to it and a lot of kind of uh, mistakes in what she did before and when when they kind of introduced that it was very powerful but the second and the third time that it was rehashed you're like okay we get it we got it but you know to me i'm like show me show me don't tell me like show 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 yeah stop talking about it talk 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 like dude I want to see your, your whatever you're doing. The best part of this movie is the kid because the kid is a bullet. She's like, why did you leave? What about you? Why, do, why can't you see the colors? I mean, she was like, uh, she was my favorite character. Uh, the mom was also good, but she kind of like, at the end, you're like, bitch, you can do all that. You could have done that in the beginning. Why didn't you do that? You're like the Jedi master. I don't know, like, and the main character was really not sympathetic in the beginning, she was. But then as the story progresses, you're like, oh, now suddenly you can see the colors, now you're a good guy. Like, now you're coming back and <laughs> momentarily you were running off and having a fit again. And, you know, like, and now you're a changed person. And now suddenly you're like Storm. Like, this is like the origin story of Storm. Now she can summon yeah. clouds and change the things and you could have done that in the beginning that would have been an awesome kind of uh the, the setups were wasted and it didn't really go anywhere and it lingered too much on the second act and it didn't really leave the second act yeah for the most part i, I tend to agree with you i think all the setups were really strong um, i think it was shot really well there was a lot of really cool shots of vistas and like it had a very expensive feel the world is set up really really well um yeah. you know with such a small budget they create this semi post-apocalyptic world where things are run down but not super run down but it does feel very authentically like things are falling apart and, and it's actually sort of interesting right now because we are experiencing a sense of that in our own world right now with covid right you know where things are feeling run down falling apart a little bit we're all getting the kung flu yeah yeah and um, it's like, uh, yeah, you can, you can relate with that. You, know, you can relate with a rundown world where things are falling apart. Um, and, and it's built upon well, you know, in terms of like the water being overpriced and things like that. Uh, but he, he, Ron is right in the second act that they do more talking than showing. They do, they, they do more telling than showing. Um, and I think this is where it really lies is like the the main character alludes to a negative past but she doesn't really hold on to that negativity it's not really exhibited in the second act she doesn't 
it's not teased that she's going back to her old ways. Like maybe she'll run off or whatever, but she's like, she's better, you know, but she's already better. We want her, we want to see her go down and then get better. Yeah. Like, what are you guilty? I understand, obviously, yeah, you were a junkie and all that, but that was not exhibited. Like Sean said, yeah. you're already better. You're already a good person. And then there's this flashback about the water. And in the, in the beginning, I thought she was being tortured because there's a water and she's in bed yeah. and like, oh, they're actually torturing her. But then it's not really that. And that, that was haunting her. And then, but it wasn't really apparent for the audience. And then when we actually, when it was actually revealed, you're like, Oh, that was it. <laughs> but I would have to say this. Uh, I do think the film is executed well in terms of like most of the other aspects of it. I think everyone does a good job acting. I think oh, yeah. everyone has yeah. a very strong presence. The mom, the kid, lead, lead character, the, the, the boyfriend cop guy, the dad, the baby daddy or whatever. I don't know what you want to call him. Um, and you know the the scientist. I feel like they all have like good nuanced characters, and I think the cinematography is great. Um, I think the music is great. Uh, but then the story itself, I, I feel like it promises so much, but it doesn't tie it up in the end to really sort of fulfill itself. To you know, it doesn't it doesn't present a mountain to climb over and for you to like cheer after you've climbed it. You, they, they cheer, but then you didn't really feel like you earned a cheer because you didn't climb over a mountain for it. The victory is good, but it doesn't feel earned or integral to the movie. Yeah, I feel the same way Sean put it uh, precisely like that. Like every, everybody did great. I think the emotion is there, but it lacks structure. I think it lacks writers. It, you know, you need a writer to kind of structure this into arcs. And this is important in movies because you only have a certain amount of time to convey everything. And I feel like it didn't have that structure and it delved too much on the emotional parts. But then, like Sean said, it, it's not earned. And in order to earn it, you need, you need beats to actually put your characters into. You need beats that beat. You need beats that beat. So all in all, it was kind of like a promising movie, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, needs, uh, it needs a lot more structure. Yeah. So Ron, what did you end up picking for your lowbrow choice? My lowbrow choice, um, I've never seen this before, but I've been hearing a lot of good things. It's called Brightburn. Brightburn is a 2019 American superhero horror film. It follows Brandon Breyer, a young boy of extraterrestrial origin, reared on Earth, who realizes he has superpowers. When they say Earth, it's actually Kansas. So basically this is, what if Superman is evil? What if Goku didn't bonk his head and actually followed the Saiyan protocol of destroying the Earth? That's the story of Brightburn. So Sean, what'd you think? Um, so yeah, I had a pretty decent time with this film. I, I thought uh, the setups were pretty interesting. Um, you know, they really played to the Superman archetype. Uh, you know, Brandon- Kansas. Is, Kansas, like, like super... the boy can super, super speed, super strength, um, flight, uh, laser eyes, all that stuff. So it, it was really sort of a, recreation of the Superman mythos. Um, I, I thought the scare, it, it was, it worked pretty legitimately as a horror movie because, um, you know, it, it, it had a lot of gore, um, you know, people's heads got like chopped off and exploded and like things were just demolished in such an easy way. Like if Superman actually just went hay haywire and like smashed a lot of things all the way through. Um, but I would have to say uh, some of the problems I, ha I had with this film um, was that uh, the characters seemed pretty dumb. And, and you can see the signs and they should be freaking out, but they never, they, they freak out, but they don't freak out to the extent of like, like calling the authorities and like letting all mankind know that the destroyer of the entire world is here. Um, and uh, yeah, and then, uh, and then also, finally, with, with the main character, with Brandon, um, 
you never really get the sense that I, I think the character is lacking a certain sense of um, internal thing, you know, like he's raised by his parents, but that immediately gets tossed out by by his like alien call, you know, so he, so he's called by the aliens and there's never really any idea that um, there's no real conflict to him turning to the dark side. He, he just gives in. He just goes, I'm, I'm evil. All right, cool. That's that's how I exist. I'm an evil dude. The scares felt good. It was shot well. There's a lot of fun to be had, but I felt like it was pretty hollow in terms of like the third act and feeling any sense of real drama or conflict with it. So to me, um, I really, really love this film. Uh, everything was perfect for the structure and and the way it was the way it was presented everything was tight everything was um kind of set up the setups were great so this is where i disagree with sean with the change thing uh, a lot of us adults forget what happened when we became teenagers when you become a teenager and it happens in every human being I'm not a parent, but I've, I saw my parents, and I certainly know for myself that I just literally just changed. There was no introspection. There was nothing. One day, I'm just jerking off. <laughs> you know, one day, I just wanted to answer back. One day, I just didn't want to comply to whatever my parents tell me one day it's just it just there was no spiritual you know technical psychological anything it just happened one day it just happened all of a sudden and you can see that with teenagers and this is the story of Brandon he was becoming a teenager and it was alluded to that like oh he's got porno magazines but no his actual puberty is him hearing voices to take over the world. Once you establish that he's evil and you establish that there is no road to, for him to rescind from e being evil or him being conflict, conflicted about his evilness, and, and once you establish that everyone's too dumb or too ill-equipped to deal with him, it's like, But who's, right. who's really going to find out that, oh, shit, you know, who's going to believe you? Like, you say, oh, you know what? Our neighbor is like you're not going to find out. That's the thing. It's like yeah, exactly. No, nothing's going to happen. So, so there's no. So it's paint by numbers. You don't you don't doubt that he's going to win and turn ultimately evil at the end. Well, I there's think there's no. There's it's just well, the go straight to evil. And I can deal with a fatalistic movie. I can deal with a movie that says this is the doom and gloom that you're coming up against. This is the reality of the world you're dealing with. But within that fatalism has to be some sense of purpose or some sense of meaning or some sense of thing. Or like a total, a total dive into evilness. Like what they could have done was that the mom managed to stab him and he is actually dying. And he uses his human intuition to actually beg and kind of, you know, dupe the mom. Yeah. Like, oh, mom, please do not <laughs> kill me. And then, oh, shit, Brandon, I'm so sorry. I'm a terrible mom. And then, boom. Yeah, ultimately, I, I thought that the film is executed well. There's a lot of scares. Um, things, are, things are set up well. Um, you really do feel like it's a superhero horror movie. I did enjoy it, but I was also left going like, what was it about? The gore is intense surprisingly intense I, I had moments where i'm like oh my goodness <laughs> what the fuck especially that like i thing yeah oh guys yeah you know, just just watch it anyway um let's go to let's go to verdict all right sean all right so uh the film i ended up choosing um i, I would say i'm pretty divided on both of them um I think I'm gonna give, I don't know. It's, it's a very, very, very slight edge to, uh, to Fast Color um, because I thought the setup was, um, was really nice. They really built the world up well. Um, they, you know, all the characters were, did a really good job at acting. 
or some some motivations that I didn't really understand. And I feel like the second act did, did sort of drop off towards the end. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just I I think the build up was better. I think it was a little bit smarter. I think the world they set up was a little bit uh, was was just um, cleaner and more intelligent. Um, I did think that uh, Brightburn was a very in- entertaining, um, unique take on a superhero horror movie. Uh, the, the way it leads to the end, I, I just didn't feel like there was any conflict or anything to really sort of fight against. I, I was just going towards the end and I knew how, how it would end and it just led directly there. There was nothing to stop or impede it or change, you know, or made me go like, oh, what if maybe this thing could happen that could save it or maybe this thing could happen that, it, that could change the way the story is being told. But the story just continues on its way and I, and I was just like, all right, well, let's just get to the end, you know. Yeah, so to me, I am bright burn all the way. I really love this film. I feel like this is the start of like a franchise. I, I feel like they, they can go places with this. They can explore how how somebody will take on a Superman. I'm, I'm really interested in what they're going to do with a, a good guy, Lex Luthor, like a, a human being that's going to take on this cosmic god that is fucking evil. Like, how, what are you going to do, right? Uh, which is, who's going to survive? So, to me, it's it's really good, uh, and I'm going to, I don't mind watching it again. I had super fun watching it, and I'll, I'll recommend it to anyone. So, to me, bright burn all the way. So that's what we thought of those two films. Be sure to tune in next time when you try to find out who was right. Sean or Ron? See you guys. Mm-hmm.